Kenneth got down on one knee and asked Armando the infamous question, will you marry me? Last night on 90 Day Fiance, we got to see some very, very, very good drama, which I will get into in a couple of seconds. But first, we have to talk about one of the main events, and that is Kenneth and Armando, the lovely couple that everyone seems to pretty much love. They got engaged last night. Now, I have two opinions to this whole engagement. First off, the majority of me is saying, hey, this is great. I'm happy for them. In last night's episode, Kenneth, he totally surprised Armando. He took him out on a romantic dinner. He brought him by the beach. He got down on one knee. It was cute. It was romantic. He even surprised Armando with his two kids and then a bunch of other people and they had a little bit of a party. So it was really sweet to see. And the majority of me is thinking that was great. I'm happy to see that. But a little smidge of me is kind of thinking, gosh, they have only been together for a week now in person, it seems kind of rushed. Now, am I the only one that is thinking this? Put in the comments below. And like I said, I'm like 80-20. 80% of me is very happy. I think it's going to work really well. But about 20% of me is like, geez, Armando has never met any of Kenneth's kids. That is what they said. Kenneth, I don't believe, has met Armando's daughter. And they have only been together in person, living together for seven days. I mean, geez, seven days, you haven't met each other's families. And I forgot to even mention the biggest thing, Kenneth has not met Armando's parents. Now, I know that Armando's parents aren't very involved in his romantic life because they're not very accepting. So I don't think it's a deal breaker if they like Kenneth or not, but I still feel like it should have been a thing where they should have probably met before. Don't you guys think? Now, do you guys think that or is that just me? And I'll say it once again, not a deal breaker. It's not that big of a deal. It just seems kind of rushed. I mean, really, what is the rush? I don't know if I missed something last Last night, but did Kenneth say like why there is such a rush to get engaged within seven days? It seems a little fast, but they do seem incredibly happy. I think Armando was very shocked. I was even shocked. I thought it was going to come weeks and weeks and weeks after living together and making sure that they actually do enjoy being together in person. But Kenneth, he had a different idea. Kenny said that he has dated long-term a few other times, but no one has ever been like Armando, which is sweet and cute. He loves him, he wants to marry him. So Kenneth and Armando did get engaged last night. Put in the comments below what you guys think, if you're happy, if you're kind of shocked, or if you guys think that Kenneth should have met Armando's parents before. I'm kind of indifferent. I'm happy about the engagement, but I don't think it would have hurt for Kenneth to have met his parents and the rest of his family before asking him to marry him. But that is just my take. Now let's fast forward over to Devin and Jihoon. And this was probably the most bizarre part of last night's episode. We got to see a lot of them last night, starting off where they kind of made up and they decided to go look for a new apartment just for one month in a better side of town where they can live together and it'll just be a better fit. Now, I don't know why they decided to get this apartment for just one month. Why won't they get something a little bit more long term? But they found a beautiful apartment. The inside was amazing. It was spectacular. There was a little park outside the apartment. So everyone was happy. They ended up going outside and the two grandparents, Jihoon's parents, and then Devin's mom, they all kind of hashed out their differences, whatever. And then once the night was over, it was dark outside. And just like that, boom, Drusilla, Devin's daughter, ran off and everyone was freaking out. And of course, in typical 90 Day Fiance fashion, the episode ended. So I was watching it thinking, what what just happened? Because Devin's mom and Devin and Ji Hoon were freaking out. Even Ji Hoon literally wind sprinted. I have never seen someone run so fast. He was trying to get her. And I'm sitting here thinking, Drusilla, she's like four, five, six years old. How fast was she running? But she took off and Jihoon sprinted after her. And if that wasn't crazy enough, because everyone was screaming and shouting, but if that wasn't crazy enough, about a second later, we got to see in the sneak peek for the next episode that Jihoon was sobbing. He was hysterically crying. Devin was also very emotional. And Devin's mom said she is so much rage and she is so upset with Jihoon. So 
I have no idea, absolutely, categorically, at 100% no idea what in God's name happened. If they're linked together, you guys seriously, please, so help me God, feel free to put in the comments below what you guys think happened. But if I had to guess, what I think happened is I think Drusilla ran off and they were freaking out because it's probably a parking lot and it's dark and she, you know, something bad could have happened. But with how fast Jihoon was going, he probably ran after her and grabbed her and I think everything was going to be fine. And when Jihoon and Devin were very emotional and Devin's mom was also very vocal and upset with Jihoon, I think that might be at a later date with something else that Jihoon, maybe he does. I don't know if he wasn't faithful. I don't know what exactly might have that been, but I don't know for sure. And I'm not really convinced that the whole Drusilla thing and Jihoon crying and Devin's mom being really upset are linked. If they are linked, maybe Devin's mom's going to say that Jihoon was supposed to watch over Drusilla and maybe she tripped, maybe she kind of got hurt, maybe something happened, and maybe Devin's mom is upset about that. But I don't think all the blame should go on Jihoon because they were hanging out as a family. They were all kind of eyeing her. She's a kid. She ran off. You know, they should probably should should have watched her a little, little bit better, but I don't think you should pinpoint anyone's fault in particular. But all this drama with Drusilla and Devin and Jihoon and Devin's mom, we will have to wait, unfortunately, until next week. But in the meantime, and of course, if anyone has any spoilers, any leaks, put in the comments below what you guys think. And yeah, we got to see Tim and Melissa, and oh my god, it's just getting ugly. This couple, if they stay together, by the end of this season, please so help me God. I'm going to have to go down to Columbia and sit these two down. They're not going to work. They're got off a couple. They cannot move you know, past the point that Tim wasn't faithful. In last night's episode, Melissa and Tim, they finally sat down her dad and told him that, hey, Tim wasn't faithful. And the dad, he just said, look, I don't think you guys should be together. I think you guys should go your separate ways. Tim, you broke our trust and we can't trust you or believe in you anymore. And I am kind of with the dad's side. Now I've read your guys' comments and you guys believe, not all, but some of you guys believe that her family is kind of harping and harping and harping on the fact that he wasn't faithful, which yes, they are. And yes, it is very annoying. And I'm not saying that it's not annoying because it is incredibly annoying, but I do think that they should break up. I don't see how they can come back from this now, especially that may Lisa's dad isn't on board. He is incredibly upset and offended and hurt. And it's like he, you know, they, they're not going to come back from this. That relationship will always be tarnished. It will never heal. I don't see how that isn't possible. And even Tim said that one of two things is going to happen. Either May Lisa is going to have to turn her back on her family, which will likely never happen or she's going to have to dump him. It's one of two things, and please so help me God, like I said a minute or so earlier, if she does not dump him, I am going to go down to Columbia and have to talk to both of them because there is no coming back from this. They're not even a good couple. They don't even seem to like each other that much, and they have all of this BS from his past unfaithfulness. So just break up and move on. On. And we saw Brittany and Yaz, and this couple is just in a standstill. They are in muck. Every single episode from this entire season that we have seen this couple, they don't progress, they don't go backwards, they just stay in the same weird, mucky spot where the relationship isn't really working. They have so many differences, and they're not really moving forward, they're not really moving backward, they're just kind of stuck. And it's really, really, really frustrating to watch because I like watching these couples progress and get better together. And and that is not happening at all with Brittany and Yazin. On last night's episode, they sat down. Yazin was showing Brittany more of the Muslim culture and the religion, and she was seeing to be open to it and accepting, and she was interested. But she had by no means any interest whatsoever in really joining the religion like immediately. She doesn't want to convert, but she's open to it. She's interested in learning more, and that's about it. But on the opposite side with Yazin, he's really pushing it on her and it's making Brittany uncomfortable and I don't blame her because no one likes to get stuff whether it's religion or culture or anything really pushed at them. The only thing I don't agree with Brittany and Yasin for that matter is was this stuff with religion really never talked about before Brittany moved over there because it's like they had to talk about something and now when she is over there all they talk about is his religion and getting married. Okay well before when she was in Florida what did they talk about 
Britney's acting like she's all, she's all surprised that he wants her to convert to his religion. Okay, well, did she have no idea before that he wanted her to convert? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So if she doesn't know and she was totally blindsided and has no idea, then I am with Britney on, hey, you know, Yazin, lean off her a little bit. But I don't think that is the case. I almost can guarantee you guys that Yazin probably said it a few times that, hey, you're going to have to convert. I want to marry a woman that is my same religion. I'm sure Brittany knew, and I'm probably pretty confident at this point that Brittany just figured, hey, we already have 90 Day Fiance lined up. Let's just move forward, go on the show, and then I'll come back to the States. So they're fighting and fighting and fighting about the religion, and not only the religion, they're also talking about the marriage and how soon he wants to get married and how soon she wants to get married. So they're having all of this fighting. And while that's going on, I am sitting here thinking, holy crap, I just remembered Brittany is still married. So once that comes out, that she won't switch to his religion, she's not dying to get married ASAP, and then once they find out, you know, Yazin and his family, that she is still married, it'll be done. She'll go back to the States, they'll throw her out of, you know, his house, she won't be able to stay there, and that'll be it. That'll be the end of their relationship, and it will be over. I don't know at this point, honestly, if she will ever even tell Yazin that she is married, because their relationship's already going down and down and down at this rate. Right? It's like, do you even bother telling the guy? Because clearly it's not going to work. And that was about it from last night's episode. Now, if you guys are sitting there wondering, well, didn't we miss someone? Because I know I am notorious for forgetting couples that are a little bit on the boring side. Well, no, I don't think we did. And if we did, I am sorry. But I know with Jenny and Sumit, they were not on last night's episode. Boo hoo, because I do love them and they are hilarious. We did see in the preview for the next upcoming episode that it sounds like Jenny and Sumit are finally going to meet with Sumit's parents, which yay, 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 I am so excited. I think that is going to be so hilarious because Jenny is so oblivious and she's kind of just says anything. And I think it'll be really funny to see how she gets along with Sumit's parents. So it sounds like that is coming up on next week's episode. And then with Biniam and Ari, once again, we did not see them, but we did get to see in the sneak peek of the upcoming episode that it sounds like Biniam is going to want to get their kid baptized in a different religion that is not, you know, like the Jewish religion that Ari is really big into. And so I don't know how that's going to play out. She seemed pretty surprised. She seemed shocked. So hopefully we get some pretty good drama. And like I said at the beginning of the video, we will also get to see what in God's name went down with Drusilla and Jihoon and Devin and Devin's mom. So I cannot wait. Well, 90 Day Fiance, guys, a lot of stuff actually happened for only being a one hour episode. And for those of you guys wondering, did you watch B90 Strikes Back? No, I don't support the show. There's nothing for me to really watch. It's not entertaining. I just kept doing my thing. I made dinner. I ate dinner last night at eight o'clock. I did not watch B90 Strikes Back. I am just wondering when on earth are they going to be done with the B90 Strikes Back episodes? There's so much other stuff that they could air or that they could show and B90 Strikes Back, I am just over it. And yes, I heard the news that Ed is now on Pillow Talk. I'm not surprised. Ed is the, 90, the new 90 Day Fiance breadwinner. It was Darcy, and then at 1.2, it was Chantel and Pedro. Okay, now it is Ed. He is the face of 90 Day Fiance. I don't know why, and I don't agree with it, but I know it kind of sucks, but that is just the case. And there is nothing we could probably do about it besides just, I don't know, skip through Ed's parts, I guess. So, 90 Day Fiance, you guys, comment below your thoughts after last night's episode. Let me know what you guys think about everything that went down on last night's episode, and also make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and stay tuned for many more videos.